I have um, an app called TripIt, and TripIt said, you may be able to check into your flight to Austin. And I thought, that's a nice distraction, I'll do that. So uh, I opened the app and it said, and I clicked, and the app worked beautifully, uh, and I clicked so that I could go to my, uh, log into my airline uh, and uh, get my boarding pass. I thought, man, it's so great to be living in the future. Here I am in a cab, downtown New York, tomorrow, you know, it's cold and rainy and tomorrow I'll be in Austin. This is awesome. And when they took me to JetBlue's website, I was presented with JetBlue's exciting website, which uh, has just had a million dollar redesign. And the, web, the login process was entirely in Flash, which does, is not supported on my iPhone. So I had an iPhone app tell me to check in on, on the web and then couldn't. Your thoughts, Mr. Mall? Um, I, so I think this is kind of like bait that Jeffrey's trying to, to bait me in on. Um, I think for those of you who know me, I have an affinity towards Flash. Um, I still do projects in Flash and I do projects that are not in Flash. Um, and the reason, the reason for that is because I started doing Flash work before I knew how to do anything. So I knew how to animate in Flash, I knew how to uh, code in Flash, um, but I didn't know how to put that stuff on the web. So from there, kind of my, my my background is I started learning HTML because I realized, oh, this is how you make a web page and this is how you put that Flash stuff on the web. Um, and from there, just kind of hacked through um, learning CSS, learning how to splice up tables. Uh, and, and I think a lot of the web kind of started that way where I think, you know, how many people kind of started that way, just like figuring stuff out and hacking through stuff? It, yeah, this is perfect. And, and I think that's kind of where we are right now, right? Where we're, we're returning to, like Jeffrey said, we're returning to kind of like the early 90s, the, the late 90s and the early 2000s where people are just figuring stuff out. And we, we see a lot of sites that were, you know, best viewed in Netscape 5 or best viewed in Internet Explorer 6. And uh, the, I think the difference now is that that wasn't a choice back then. It was people had a browser installed on their systems and they, that's how they knew how to browse the Internet. We're sort of at the same place where we get best viewed in iPad, best viewed on uh, iPhone, best viewed, but no one puts that on the device. And I think the difference is because um, we're, we're sort of like choosing the type of experience that we want by doing it. That's interesting, Dan. It seems to me that you're, you're talking about two different perspectives at the same time. One is the perspective of consumers who make these choices. I want to sit back on my couch, so I'll pull out my iPad now. I want to read the news. Or uh, I need a break from work, so I'll, I, I'm at my desktop browser. You know, you might read the newspaper on, in many different environments, but you know, one's urgently leaning forward at your desk working, and another one is sitting back on the couch. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think part of it is that we as creators, we view things in a particular way. Whereas people who are users or people who are consumers, they view things in a completely different way. They're, they're technology agnostic, and I think that's how we have to be as creators. You, you, gotta, you gotta think about it, what it's like to be a user or a reader, and you have to think about uh, there are different moods or different modes that people have at different times of day. And so there isn't one construction on, on the best case for uh, an app or a website. Uh, but I think as things get more complicated, the web looks just better and better. And if you uh, do everything in HTML5, okay, maybe you, do, you can wrap uh, a hybrid app around it uh, and then go, go to iOS or go to uh, Android or go to any, any of these other things that look like they're going to happen. Uh, but at the same, and there are people who love their apps, and I'm not going to be the one to tell them you can't have your apps. Uh, but at the same time, what are we, how are we going to support all that if we don't stay with web standards and stay with the stuff that's working so well? You know, one of the things, Roger, one of the reasons to bank on web standards, you, you know, when, when we were just doing web development, when we weren't thinking about mobile, we weren't talking about publishing, there were no iPhones. One of the reasons we did it was, you know, uh, save 25% or more on labor. It's not a very exciting uh, uh, proposition. It's not the kind of thing that you'd like fight someone to the death over, but it, you know, but it was a, kind of a, it was a, an appealing message for business. Write once, publish everywhere. And that seems to be true if you go with a native solution, I'm sorry, if you go with a web standard solution as opposed to a native or hybrid solution, it enables you to do the same thing in the struggling world of publishing. And speaking of the struggling world of publishing, hi Mandy. I don't know what, what uh, I guess. Um, well, I'll, I'll back up a little yeah. bit and say I think partly you know, you're right that some of the uh, incentive for web standards initially was about um, saving money and saving labor and doing things easier, like designing for so many different platforms was just a huge pain in the ass. Um, but I also think a kind of ethic has emerged from that in the sense that, you know, in print the designer has kind of total tyranny over the page 
anything the designer does, you as a reader can't escape from. If, it, if the margins are too small or the type is too small or it's ugly, you, you're kind of, the only choice you have is to move away and read something else. But what's beautiful about web standards when you completely separate the content and, and the presentation is that you as a reader actually have the end control. So you can have your own user style sheet and make it what you want it to be. And you can act, you, know, you might want an app one minute and, the web, and a website the next, and the next minute you might, you might be on the subway and want to read it you know, on Instapaper. Um, and I think as, a, as, a, as, a, as someone who consumes content, that is just an unparalleled good. Like that is so much better. Um, and the, the kind of divergences that we're seeing in apps, I think, can be, um, is, is in some ways a step in the wrong direction. What strategies do, I mean, Roger, you work with publishers uh, both as a provider of templates, right? You, you can provide blanket solutions, you can come in as a designer and provide custom solutions. How do you, and you've been working with, with newspapers and magazines for 20 yeah, years. I, how do you, how do you talk to, to these say, people? I have to say, and maybe I shouldn't say this in public, but my, experience with the establishment media, uh, the print folks that I, they were my old time customers since I was a child, uh, they don't get it. Talk about cluefulness. Uh, what's really broken is the business model. Every single form of media, uh, all the ones represented in, in, at South by, are, they have a tr trouble with their model. The thing is that uh, we can't fix that. They're going to have to fix that for themselves. The question of if you have exclusive great stuff, people will pay for it. Uh, Hollywood is the one media type, and, the, and, and we see some, some real great ac activity here in the adjacent film festival, uh, that does still charge, still has a pretty good business model. It's a pretty small business that they've done pretty well in using the web to promote themselves. The, the magazines and newspapers have not. And there's an enormous amount of contention about, oh, content should be free and all this stuff. Okay, if you didn't put out such crap, we'd pay for it. And, and I think that that's really the issue. You got to make the product good, and you have to have a good business plan to succeed nowadays in this medium. I would go even a little bit more specific and say that the pricing model is broken in addition to the, the entire business model. I, I mean, I think publishers are so old school in, in general that they don't really get how people are going to consume content in a different way than they already publish it. So, you know, I'll pay $1.99 for an issue of Wired, or I'll pay a, t a $10 subscription for an issue of Wired to get to receive it in the mail. And, and they sort of apply that same thing. Okay, well, we'll do the same thing to Wired on an iPad, or we'll do the same thing to Marvel Comics on an iPad. And it's, it's a different type of device with a different type of way that people interact with it, and yet they still apply, apply the same pricing model to that, and it, it just feels broken. A lot of people aren't willing to take that step.